Christmas at Sammy's Workshops is usually all handmade. This year, for my work friend who has a birthday just before Christmas, I made her a pair of pillows from some orphaned table centerpiece blocks from a pattern by Sweet Pea Designs. I had originally started to make her a full table centerpiece, as the Sweet Pea plan describes, but I got sidetracked from that project, and now being a little short on time, I'm going to go ahead and make her a couple of pillows instead. Stick around for a bit and we'll have a look at how they're made. If this sounds like the kind of video that you would enjoy more of, please hit the like, subscribe, and click on the alert bell to get notified of new videos being uploaded. New videos are usually posted every week on Wednesday, with some others in between as time and projects allow. Before we get to today's project, let's take a moment to talk about workshop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all of the safety rules that come with both your hand and power tools. Knowing how to properly operate your tools and following these safety rules can significantly reduce the risk of damage and or personal injury. And of course, there are no more important safety rules than to avoid loose clothing, long sleeves, and to wear safety glasses, hearing and respiratory protection as needed. Now let's get to today's project. Hello YouTube, my name is Sammy and welcome back to Sammy's Workshops. Today's project is to make a pair of pillows from these orphaned table center feast blocks from an original design by Sweet Pea Designs. Sweet Pea uses a single first step, tacking down both the fabric and the batting all at once. I prefer to do these separately so that I can trim the batting to reduce the thickness in my seam allowances. That means I'll stitch Sweet Pea's first step three times. Once as a placement stitch, the second time to tack down the batting, at which point I'll remove the hoop from the machine and trim the batting put it back in the machine, and then stitch it a third time to tack down the background fabric. I didn't happen to film these three steps of these particular blocks, but it's the exact same steps I used in an earlier table centerpiece block, and those pictures are what I've shown here. Then we get on to the stitching, uh, the embroidery stitching, and the applique here, with some orange for the pumpkin bodies and some green for the stems. Sweet Pea Designs always seem to stitch out really quick and very easy, and they always look great. Once those blocks are completed, the size I chose measures out 6 inches tall and 10 inches wide. I cut some 3.5 inch strips from some pale orange fabric for the sides, and some 6 inch strips out of a pale red fabric for the top and bottom. The back pieces I cut from a medium brown fat quarter. I trim 3 inches off the long side so that I wind up with a piece that's 15 inches by 22. Then I cut it in half so that I have two pieces, each 11 by 15 inches. I'll take one edge, fold it over 3 eighths of an inch, press it at the ironing board, and then fold it over a second time and press it again. I'll stitch twice across the folded edge, repeat for the other piece, and then I'll set them aside for a bit. The pillow project I'm making here will wind up as a 15 inch square, just the right size to fit a 14 inch pillow form. So we'll start with our pillow face block, this one again being 6 inches by 10 inches, and we'll start with the red strips, the 6 inch strips, and we'll sew those across the top and the bottom using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You can use quarter if you prefer. I used 3 8 and it turned out just fine and I had plenty of fabric without a lot of wasting. Once these, these pieces are stitched, we'll take it over to the ironing board, press the seams to set them, and then press the red out uh, to open them up. Next we'll sew the side pieces on. Those are the 3 and a half inch orange strips. Uh, and again, once those are done, we're back to the ironing station, press to set the stitches, and then press them to open up. Now we have a square that's a little bit larger than 15 inches. You can take it to your cutting mat uh, with a trimming square and a roller cutter and trim it to a 15 inch square at this point. 
Lay the completed pillow face square on the table face up. Take one of the back halves that we made before and lay it on top of the face of the pillow, good sides together, with the folded and stitched edge towards the middle, lining the top raw edges together. And pin across the top, being sure the pins are approximately an inch and a half in from the edges. I usually use three pins across the top myself. You can use however many you like. Take the second square with the same stitched edge overlapping the first one and the finished edge pointing towards the top of the pillow. Lay it on top of the one that's already pinned down, lining up the raw edges at the bottom, and again pin it, usually three across the bottom, and then one on either side where the, the two pieces overlap so that they'll stay together while we're trying to stitch them together. I like to stitch generally at least twice around the pillow for strength. I use a 3 8 to half inch seam allowance. Uh, normally I use a single stitch the first time around and then a triple bean stitch if your sewing machine has it. Or you could just do a single stitch twice around or maybe even three times around if you think the pillow is going to take a lot of abuse. Um, if your machine doesn't have the bean, that, that works just fine either way. Trim to a quarter to three eighths inch seam allowance all the way around and clip those corners at a 45 degree angle as shown. Turn the pillow right side out through the folded over opening um, and then be sure to push the corners out with a turning tool or my favorite tool to use is a ch an unused chopstick and insert the appropriate size pillow form, in this case a 14 inch square. Voila, you're all done. Many thanks to Sweet Pea Machine Embroidery for the really neat pumpkin pattern. I will have a direct link to that pattern in the note or in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe and click on that alert bell to get notified of new videos being uploaded. I upload new videos each week on Wednesday with some others in between as time and projects allow. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I have a website as well for the patterns that I digitize myself and plans I make up to download. Links for those will also be in the comments down below, as well as those to tools and supplies I use if you want to get those same items. That's all I have for this time. Thank you so much for stopping by, and until next time, see ya!